All right, welcome back to another video by Firestarter Graphics and Engineering. Today we're going to be discussing more computational fluid dynamics, and we're going to do a more advanced case dealing with advanced geometry. Technically, the geometry is not advanced. I should say the geometry is complex, and this is where things can go wrong with meshing. So a gentleman contacted me, sent me a message saying, hey, I have this file that I've been trying to do CFD on, but I can't get it to work. Can you help me out? And I said, what's the uh, file? And he's like, oh, it's just a model rocket. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, model rockets aren't that complicated. I wonder what's going on. Then he sent me the file of what he designed, and I will tell you what's going on. It's a really cool concept of what he's doing, and the geometry is kind of complex. I'm going to hit the home button. Whoops. Let's hit here, hit home. Okay. Looking at this, this is what he created. Now, Based on the title, I'm assuming it's to launch a weather balloon or even a smaller balloon or something, something to do with a balloon. But not too crazy of geometry. I mean, looking at it from a basic modeling standpoint, it's not that complex. But from a CFD standpoint, meshing could become a nightmare because, look, we got all these rods and all these little tiny spaces right here. And look at the fin tips. And these could be troublesome. I... I would say they shouldn't be, but I will tell you that they are, and it's it's not much needed. It's uh, You could probably leave them on there and be just fine following this method, but I remove them just in case. So first off, whenever I get a model like this, usually what I do is I move to the part design. I lied. Part workbench, not part design, part workbench. I click the file I'm looking at. I'm going to hit refresh just to make sure it's fully refreshed. And I'm going to go to part and check geometry. Now, if I were to run the check right now, most likely it's going to say no errors. And most people are going to be like, oh, okay, great. But we need to do run boolean operation check. So this person created this file in Fusion 360. And when he exported it and did his boolean operations in Fusion 360 it said there was no errors. However, when I run the check within Onzel or FreeCAD it shows a lot of errors. Now, I do not know if this is from exporting from Fusion and then re-importing into Onzel or FreeCAD or if there's an issue between Fusion exporting to step file in the first place. So we're still trying to figure that out. However, as of right now, it should still work using this method. You might run into a few errors during the CFD, but I'll show you how to to work around that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit close. So what's the first thing that we need to do? Well, we need to clean up this geometry. So I'm going to expand this. I'm going to take the motor case and the fairing, and I'm going to just union them together. And since I said I got rid of the fin tips. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get rid of all the fin tips and the pogo pin board and the safety board. Delete that. So we're getting better. Let's get rid of the fin supports, the support rods. Hit delete and hit yes. Okay. Now we're just left with the fin pivots, the fin rods, and our original airframe. So I'm going to take these two. I'm going to union them together. Then I'm going to rename everything to what it needs to be. So airframe, and then fins. Okay. From here, we're going to begin our CFD setup process. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going, and then I'll explain step by step what I've done. Okay. Now I will say I did create this in the most current stable version of FreeCAD, which is 1.0 because that is what resembles Onzel the most at the moment because Onzel, as most people know, has shut down but they took all of their code, gave it to FreeCAD and that's what became FreeCAD 1.0 and then you can follow a tutorial which I already talked about in one of my other videos of how to make FreeCAD look like Onzel so however you can still run this in the older version of Onzel and it will be just fine. I've, I've done it and it works. Now with that said you can see that there's something going on with the fins. I'll talk about that here in a minute. You just It's hard to see them. So you're probably looking over at the tree list. I'm going to lower this down and you're wondering, well, what the heck is this cut? Okay, 
So when it comes to complex geometry, you're used to dealing, like the last CFDs, we took our rocket, put it in the cube, and made a compound. That works for basic geometry, and it, it could work for complex geometry, but it was not working for me on this example. So I stuck the rocket in the cube, the virtual wind tunnel, and I did a boolean cut in the part workbench. So basically, let's go back to here, I highlighted the cube, which is what I wanted cut to be cut, and then I highlighted the rocket second, which is the cutting knife, so to speak, and then we just did an operation cut. And that will basically create a negative impression of your rocket inside of the virtual wind tunnel. So, that's one way of doing it, and it's a pretty decent way because the geometry is now molded. It's like a mold right into the virtual wind tunnel. So, with that in mind, you can see that underneath here the fins uh, have an invalid shape. We'll discuss what happened here in a second. So then you know, go into C CFDOF, drop an analysis container. We did our physics model. I did steady, single phase, viscous, RANS for the physics, for the fluids, just basic air. The initialized fields for this one, I stuck with potential flow. I just wanted a simple case study, and since it's not, it's at 0 0.3 for the Mach number, I didn't want to move into the high speed aerodynamic testing with HISA yet, and I wanted to stick with potential flow. And make sure this ran before switching to use values from boundary, etc., etc. All right, turbulence. The only thing was I got that from the inlet, so you cannot set up initialized fields until you've done your boundary conditions. So inlet, and then this is the inlet. This is the outlet. Let's take a peek at our inlet. I used. 200 meters per second with this standard pressure and standard temperature, so STP, uniform velocity, etc., etc. And then that was everything for the physics setup and the actual analysis. Now for meshing, everything was working great until we did meshing. So you highlight the cut and then you'll drop the compound, not compound, sorry, the CFD mesh down. And notice it says cut mesh. That's because you're meshing the cut, and that's what you want. And so, went in there, double click, set it to 100 millimeters. Do not write it yet. We need to set up our mesh refinements. So then, I had my refinement cube already in place, and in my CFD cut mesh, if you highlight that and then hit mesh refinement it drops one down so I was like okay let's do this so did a volume refinement set it to 75 percent reduction so it leaves me with 25 millimeters select from list grab the refinement and as soon as I made it solid all of a sudden I got all these input errors about the shape is null for the fins so something happened with the setting up I haven't even ran the mesh yet but setting up the volume caused something to happen with the fins. So I just kind of ignored it just to see if it would work. And then the last you highlight cut mesh again and you drop another mesh refinement and the last mesh refinement is it looks like this is the one that possibly broke at the surface because it's the one that has the check mark. And so made it so it was one millimeter across the entire rocket surface, clicked airframe and fins. This is the one that made it break, sorry, not refinement, or volume refinement. And as soon as I did this, the fins broke. So I just went along with it and hit OK. And fun fact, I ran the mesher and it meshed, went into pair view and it showed a mesh and it looked really nice. And then I came back and ran the CFD analysis and it worked. It ran through, I set it for 8 CPUs and 100 iterations and it leveled out about 60 
on the force And I have a picture of that, so I just got to find it real quick. Let's look right here. Okay, yeah. So here's the reporting function. Whoops. So, as you can see in the Y direction, because that's where I have my 200, mil, uh, 200 meters per second. And it levels out, and we hit about 52 newtons on that nose cone. So, everything leveled out. And... I was surprised, you know, that it worked, even with the air. Hopefully it works for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And so I just let it let it run. It took about five minutes. Then I opened it up in ParaView, and I had a hard time in ParaView trying to get the data to load. At first, it would never load the data. So let me show you what was going on in ParaView. The, usually, if you've seen my other videos, you just get the internal mesh and then you just grab the patch that has the rocket which in our case was wall 001 and it would work but it literally loaded an empty cube without the ends it just loaded the four walls around the side of the virtual wind tunnel and nothing inside so I started doing messing with combinations and it for whatever reason it needed the group wall the internal mesh and the patch of the wall 001 and as soon as I did that, I looked inside, and sure enough, my rocket was there. And you can see it even included the fins. So it did a pretty good job of meshing it. So then I used ParaView uh, the other in, in the normal ways that I showed you guys. I did a slice, and it showed everything, and you know, streamlined tracers and all that fun stuff. So I mean, I could hit delete and we're back to this I mean I could hit well let's see what's inside here yeah so there's our object right there I'm gonna hit delete on that just because I'm curious and then we're going to do a slice which one do I want and then we're just gonna hit apply and sure enough there it is but fun fact it has a hard time showing the fins in a 2d slice but you can uh, whoops I hate when I mess this thing up let's go right there and hit apply oh it's starting to show a little bit of the fins as you move the cutting plane so let's hit apply there actually we're just gonna hit delete come on and then we're gonna just do it again okay so we're going to zoom in it's a little tricky here but we're going to zoom in right here and you can see a shock wave starting to form right here on the around the nose this pressure starting to form because of that blunt nose i mean look how much pressure is just right there obviously because it's flat so let's go to the u vector the velocity vector so let's I think U is velocity, but you can see the shedding along here. Let's do surface LIC. You can see a lot of the vertex shedding right there. My laptop has a hard time with. And if you want better color, I've got to remember to switch the blending mode down here color mode to multiply wow that really did not like usually it goes a lot um, darker I mean not darker but a lot lighter interesting anyways so we'll just go back to blend so you can kinda see how how that worked and then if we wanted to we can go back to foam go to filters common extract block go back all the way up and do wall hit apply and then there's our actual rocket on it so you can see how the streamers go around it and all that fun stuff and then the extract block we could even switch back to the velocity but I, I like the the pressure 
So that is how you would deal with more complex geometry and how to mesh it to make it work. So anyways, I just wanted to show that and I hope this answered some questions for you guys, but this was a this this took a good 20 hours to figure out what was going on. But pretty cool. Anyways, then after this, throw it into Open Rocket, sim it. Actually, a lot of people do Open Rocket first and then CFD, but it doesn't matter. You know, just just have fun, learn, and go build some rockets, go fly them. And fun fact for me, I've learned to stick with Class One rockets because you can buy some high-powered rocket motors that are still considered Class One, which means you don't need a waiver or a club to launch it. For example, I think it's the H two something and the H120 something has between 115 to 120 grams of propellant and that falls within the range of a class 1 model rocket so I always go out and fly my class 1's all the time and um, the only thing I've ever done is I call the local air traffic control tower and say hey I'm flying some class 1 rockets out here but they have a little bit higher altitude because of the motor in it so this is where I'm at just you know keep in mind they're like well you don't have a waiver but thanks for letting us know and you don't need a waiver anyway and I was like yeah no problem so if you if you can just just be nice to the FAA and the ATC I know they're government bodies and sometimes that can be frustrating but anyways have fun enjoy and continue engineering cool stuff